Hello everyone, I'm Tom Denford, co-founder and CEO of IDcoms. Welcome to another episode of Media Snack Meets, where we get to meet the individuals and organizations doing great work to inspire success and drive change in the global media and marketing industry. Because the best are short on time, we do six questions in 15 minutes or less. Uh, and we get to learn what is behind the success, sometimes what it makes, what it takes to make change in the industry, and maybe what the rest of us can learn from those experiences. My guest for this episode is Rob Rakowitz, who leads an amazing initiative called the Global Alliance for Responsible Media at the WFA, the World Federation of Advertisers. Oh, hey guys. Hey, Hello, gentlemen. Where are you? There you are. Yes. Welcome back to News Snack. Hey, Tom. Thanks for having me back. Very good. Um, so I'd, I'd said in the intro, there's a number of things that you do, but the thing that now you, it's, it's amazing, this thing that you're doing, which is leading this uh, initiative for the WFA, uh, the Global Alliance for Responsible Media. And I was mentioning to you just before we went, kind of came on air, as it were, uh, is two years ago, just over two years ago, you stood on stage at the Festival of Media in Rome, these glamorous places that we get to go, and you presented, uh, and I'll, I will link down below, it's 30 minutes and you have to watch this. This is Rob standing on stage presenting this idea of media sustainability, which at the time nobody was thinking about. And it was just a real provocative little session that got people thinking, and here we are two years ago, um, and gone has got this amazing momentum and everybody's talking about it. So bravo to you. Just tell us a little bit about GOM um, and the initiative and, and how you've got to where it's got to. For those yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been a crazy, wild, inspiring, challenging ride. Um, and, you know, and it wouldn't have been possible without, you know, Allies like you guys in ID comms, uh, you know, folks like you in in David who have been like you know good sounding boards, and then like really really strong partners, you know, uh, Luis Tacomo, Derek, Jerry D'Angelo, Ben Jankowski, uh, Jackie Stevenson, Isabel Massey, John Montgomery, Joe Barone. The list goes on and on and on. Um, and it's been really really um, great because we started this out um, from a position of full head and full heart. Um, we're sort of really understanding where the media industry um, was starting to go um, if left sort of unchecked. And really it's like, how do we um, elevate our sense of, of ownership? Um, you know, how do we allow for individuals as well as individual organizations and parts of the ecosystem to step into their responsibility and understanding like, look, are there un unintended consequences for the actions that we're about to be taking? Um, so, um, you know, that was sort of just like the backdrop of it. And if you come from a packaged goods company, you probably are thinking about like product that actually leaves um, an assembly line, gets packaged, gets put on shelf, and then, you know, put into somebody's home or even in their mouth. Um, and you have a real sort of sanctity of life sort of sensibility yeah. to it. And, and I, and I think that, you know, if you sort of stand back and you look at the media industry unchecked and people sort of operating with probably, you know, sort of not negative intent, but sort of just not really thinking through things and sort of the drive for sort of cost reduction, you know, sort of the drive for um, audience delivery and really not thinking about context. And we got into a, a sort of dark space um, within media where, you know, we were buying audiences, but not really understanding the context of where we were reaching them. And you had a lot of things where um, things that were monetized or are being monetized shouldn't necessarily been. So e.g. ads being placed in it. And it was just kind of like we had a sort of like, you know, timeout moment. Yeah. And I think that, you know, it started to precipitate itself sort of in the December before that um, festival of media. And I think that sort of um, unfortunately the events in, in Christchurch, the, the massacre, they're being live casted. Uh, sort of a you know pedophilia network being uncovered through comments on on say YouTube, um, 
these were like sort of like okay there's we've got to take action um mm -hmm. so you know when we were in rome together we were like basically starting to finalize out like sort of like what would this be as a concept um and we started this initiative out that brings together advertisers media agencies um platforms industry associations to effectively remove advertising support in harmful content in yeah. digital media um and i think that, it's, yeah go that, ahead that that is you know let's not underestimate how difficult that is to get all those different parties to the table it's very easy to get them to pose for a photo at can it's very difficult i mean much e very easy to get them to pose for a photo together in can you know and 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 say we support this actually get two years later getting them to actually really co coordinate and collaborate for change and and encouraging marketers to change the way they invest their dollars into more responsible places to encourage platforms and publishers and content owners to change the, their practices to enable and to reassure and give marketers you know more confidence in where their money's going and what it's what it's doing um it's an amazing achievement just to get that get that cr it's not even cross aisle because it's like five or six different cohorts here all with different vested interests and, and you've managed to coordinate and get them to to uh, collaborate which is testament to to your initial ambition your ability to kind of communicate across these things having come you know previously for those that don't know rob was previously global media director at mars um, so you were on the brand side, you've been on the agency side, you work close with publishers. So I think leveraging those relationships and with the trade associations um, has been amazing. So and you've created something quite wonderful here, which is yeah. just, just no, the beginning, I think. And, and, and like I said, it, I, I think that everybody has sort of recognized the context and we've been able to co-create something together because I'm not, I'm not going to take credit for for all of this work um, because it's 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 really required strong partnership and, um, you know, advocacy, even from sort of the companies that are being um, put under a lot of scrutiny in terms of changing ways of working. Um, and we wouldn't be as far along without them. Um, yeah. and, and I think that everybody has sort of this, this, you know, this topic sits heavily on a lot of people. Um, so it's not taken lightly um, and, you know, and I'm, I'm sure from the outside, it probably looks like, you know, hey, look, you know, it's it's really great that the industry is coming together and, you know, hey, you know, photo opportunities, press releases, it might look like amazing from the outside. Um, and like that things are sort of easily done, but it's not. It's like a lot of things need to work their way through the system. Certain people, all, you know, at different parts of the journey, um, you know, having to get folks aligned internally in teams that we didn't even know existed in organizations and in platforms um, and getting them out in terms of SMEs, you know, subject matter experts and having them weigh in and sort of, you know, give us a sense of what was possible, what's not possible. Um, mm -hmm. And it's really, it's very humbling. It's very humbling to sort of be exposed to all of this stuff. And it's very humbling um, to be sort of, um, you know, I guess on the helm um, and and piloting sort of the course uh, with so many great you know folks within the industry, um, mm -hmm. and you almost look at it, it almost becomes sort of like it's a bit of the 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 Manhattan Project for the media industry, and it's like getting all of the people out in sort of the de desert and working together, um, and it's kind of like locking them up and sort of saying like don't come out until you solve it, um, and that's kind of what we've created is that weird sort of like hyper-focused mentality and this drive for results. And we don't always agree. Um, and there are sh sort of sharp conversations, um, but what we are is committed to working together, which is a beautiful thing. And we didn't have that before. That's really good. I mean, uh, we'll get on with the episode. That was a, that was a good intro. And I, I know, I'm, you know, it's good for people to understand exactly what you do. I, th I hear more people talking about Garm now, and that's a really good sign. It's not like some inside a little bubble of a kind of small, you know, niche group of people trying to fix something. Um, it's being it's being discussed as, and it comes up in conversation. I think more marketers are leaning into it, which is really good. Um, I'm not going to ask you what you're most proud of because I'm imagining that's probably the, the case. And and we might we'll probably touch on your cycling achievements at some point later in the episode. <laughs> um, let, let's switch into question number two. So, as as I mentioned, you've you've you know you've seen the industry from multiple sides um, through your career. But what what to you is the best thing about working in the media industry? 
Yeah, so I would say that it's um, probably diversity in the sense of um, diversity of experiences, diversity of skill sets, diversity of thinkers. Um, so diversity of sort of experiences, I think that sort of yesterday will not be like today mm. and today will not be like tomorrow. Um, and I think that it's just like sort of like I aging myself, but like when I first got into this industry, you know, we're talking about like 20 years ago, it just was night and day the way that it operated. Um, and you know, where we are going to be tomorrow is also going to be a, a radically different thing. Um, you know, look, you just look at sort of the last, what is it, month in terms of, you know, the, the stock market and the amount of companies that have gone public. And it's just like, it's like a whole other sector is sort of like blossoming and sort of like, you know, blooming. And it's, um, it's only a matter of time before that happens again somewhere else within the media yeah. industry. And it's absolutely fantastic. I'd say sort of diversity of sort of skill sets, because it's like you're dealing with, you know, where I grew up, which is like research and, you know, strategic planning and comms planning. And then you've got like people who are pure operations focused and investment focused. And then you have like ad tech specialists. It's just like, wow, there is room for everybody in this industry. And it's great. And I really hope that, you know, the industry follows through with sort of skill sets as well as like sort of personal identifiable backgrounds and stuff yeah, like that. I mean, another, um, good, and, another good WFA initiative, really. Yeah. I mean, you know, they've done this amazing work <clears throat> on that. Thank you. Um, just and then, and then I'd say also sort of like di diversity in thinking, right? Because it's like, look, with all these different skill sets, you've got voices from all over the world. You've got right left brain, left brain, introverts, extroverts, yeah. and being able to sort of realize that you live in this beautiful mosaic is just, and working within it is just like it's it's fantastic. Good. It's good. I love. I just it's just a picture of optimism. I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, Let's, let's switch then. So biggest challenges, and there's a number, but from, from you know, either, either something that's right now or that you've seen over the years, what, what is it that we struggle with as a media industry that you wish? You know, could be different? Yeah, I, I would say, how do we overcome fragmentation and silos to actually realize the collective good, right? And I think that it's sort of how we got to sort of some of the unintended consequences. And it's also how we will get out of the unintended consequences. So, you know, let me sort of unpack that. So the idea of fragmentation where everybody operates in a silo, yeah. you've got somebody over in procurement or buying sort of operating to one KPI, somebody over in sort of strategy or planning operating on something else, somebody on the publisher side. And it's really everybody operating in silos that sort of pushes and pulls things apart. I think sort of the, the biggest, you know, sort of way out of that challenge is like sort of instead of recognizing what sort of pulls us apart or what makes us unique is, is what did we actually have in common? Or is there a common growth agenda that we can actually all, you know, create or common, you know, sustainability and responsibility agenda that we can all create um, that allows us to sort of pull together. So I think that we're sort of like where we had been historically, I would say over the last, I don't know, let's just say, you know, call it 10 years or something like that has been sort of drive into silos and specialization. And I think what now we're, we're seeing is like something where we can come together um, and, and really sort of put, you know, individual interests or specialist interests aside. Um, and, I, and I think that to me is sort of the biggest challenge is how do we overcome fragmentation, um, you know, be it specialty, be it sectors, be it, you know, individual marketers even fragmented or different countries fragmented um, or even within countries fragmented. I, I think this is the biggest issue that we even face societally is how do we actually overcome fragmentation? Yeah, what we, we find it, I mean, the more analysis that we do of that kind of stuff, you did, you, in our view, is that it's just misaligned incentives. Often, that's the thing, is that everyone is kind of chasing, as you said, slightly different KPIs or chasing slightly different rewards. And yet the media supply chain could be a lot, a lot more aligned in its incentives, you know, and more of those should be focused on the growth of the marketer and everybody can succeed if the market is growing. You know, I think to, to, you know, to name check another uh, great trade association, the, the US, the Association of National Advertisers has this amazing kind of growth council um, 
which CEO Bob Leardy uh, is very yeah. good at ex ex kind of explaining exactly how that works and the areas for CMOs to focus on focus on growth. And exactly the same thing should be applied to the anyone working in, we call it the supply chain, it's a little bit just, I mean, I'm in the supply chain, we're all in the supply chain. Uh, but everyone that works in the ecosystem or the industry and serving the needs of advertisers can contribute to all of those elements. You know, we can all contribute and we can all win and we can all get rewarded um, if we focus on those things. So, yeah, and, and, and I think that to me is like the amazing thing when you actually look at sort of team sports and then just sort of, sort of like industry sort of like working out, which is like, how do I actually create the win, win, win here? You know, and it's not sort of, it's and, and like we have to sort of break down sort of the reptilian brain thinking, which is like, I'm in a, you know, negotiation and somebody is going to win and somebody is going to lose. And I need to make sure that I'm the one who's winning. It's like, no, you can actually all win here. And I think that's been sort of like the, the, the people who are able to drive change. It's where it's where it's recognizing that there's a shared win. And I think that to me is what the, what the beauty is. And, you know, and I think that there are certain leaders you know, and we're we're lucky to work. You know, with say, you know, um, you know, we're, we're lucky to work with Mark Pritchard. We're lucky to work with Bob Leides. We're, we're lucky to work with Raja Raja Manar, um, and you know, Stefan Lorica. And you know, we've got some really really amazing leaders who are rooting us on. Um, and you know, on platform side as well. You know, we've got you know, um, we've got really amazing. Uh, commitment and buy-in from C-suite level down, you know, and it's been really humbling to be like in Davos where I didn't think we'd be like launching a festival of media in Davos and yeah. like, you know, going there, you know, because it's just like the tourism that gets involved in this uh, sort of thing is just like, it's humbling. Um, and you have Susan Wojcicki, you know, going to bat for you, CEO of YouTube and sort of saying that this is a, you know, this is a big initiative and um, and it's it's fantastic. It brings us very nicely, Rob, perfectly to our next question. So, and you've, uh, you know, you've worked in your career, you've worked with some really big name CMOs, you've worked with some big agency CEOs, and now you're working alongside as a kind of peer around the table with some very high profile marketers and, and media leaders. What's the, what's the best piece of advice that you carry around? Either something that you've been given that you found inspiring over the years or something that you frequently give to others? Yeah, so I I think that context is everything. Um, and it, it's just like, that's a media play, um, but it's also a leadership play too, right? Um, and it's really funny because that context is everything is also sort of like, you know, everything that we're talking about in GARM. Um, is that like, look, it, it is all about sort of understanding and having empathy for context and understanding like, look, why is why is somebody taking up this position or why is somebody sort of saying this? Is there some, are there subtitles there that you actually need to decode? Um, and, and I think that's actually really quite interesting because then you start to really understand why do organizations make decisions? or do things or why is this person sort of you know saying this or why are things this way um and like look when you look at it it's kind of like well why is harmful content being allowed online or why is it being monetized and if you actually start to unpack the context for it you can actually figure out how we got here and what is it actually going to take to get over it you know why you know why are platforms conflicted um on things like disinformation um, and, you know, why is it such a thorny topic um, and how do we actually find a way that we can all sort of move forward and have, a, you know, understandable win. And, yeah. you know, and it's and and that's really the, the 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 sort of thing that I would recommend is just context matters. It does. And, it, you know, in, you know, increasingly narrow view of everybody's opinions in you know 140 characters or less uh it's a, it's a dangerous game isn't it you can get easily cancelled after one tweet um with no context oh, totally. uh, you've got to think about your own context as well um so my right, personal passion Every, everybody that knows you knows what what the answer to this is going to be <laughs> they, might, they, might, they might they might assume that you know you could be sitting here in your in your lycra and that's not supporting you know the u.s gymnastics olympics uh what is it what is it that not only keeps you uh, you know, keeps you focused, but uh, where would we find you? 
Yeah, so I'm, I, I, so it's funny that you make the joke about, uh, you know, uh, Lycra. Unfortunately, some of the people who will be watching this have seen me in Lycra, you know, coming into a meeting. Uh, so it's, it's cycling and it's competitive cycling. And I've been very fortunate to um, have been part of a uh, team um, with really good leadership, uh, looking at the numbers, building sort of a high performance team and being able to focus on individual and sort of personal achievements. And it's it's really helped shape sort of my worldview on what leadership looks like inside the office um, and really being able to sort of build up talent and build up a team. And, you know, it's got it's got part of, you know, sort of the philosophy of sort of like, you know, total football from, you know, the Dutch and stuff like that where it's like making sure that everybody has a role, but everybody can sort of slot in for each other. Um, but, you know, really understanding what does it mean to sort of be part of a team? What does it mean to sacrifice for each other? What does it mean to know when to burn a match, so to speak, um, and put yourself sort of like into the red and knowing when and where and how you can actually recover? So, you know, cycling for me has been sort of, um, you know, a really sort of, um, personality sort of defining and leadership defining experience for myself. Um, so where you'll find me um, at my happiest times, aside from being with my family, because when I go into introverted mode, it will ha be sort of on a saddle um, in, in the, in, uh, you know, on a road somewhere out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it's good. Beware. Look, look out for Rob and his Lycra. Um, now, our final question is always like hopes for the year ahead. And I think when I, you know, I'm asking that to you, particularly in the context of GARM, which as we've said, has come a long way. I assume you must look and think, oh, we're just at like base camp. We've got, we've got a huge mountain ahead of us to really, and a huge opportunity. You know, being optimistic in just a year ahead, what do you think we can achieve? What are your hopes for this time next year? Yeah, so um, really good. I, I, I think that we, you know, the big thing I would say is like consolidating our wins because I think we have enough like sort of global kit at this stage and thinking where it's kind of like, where do we go next? And I think quite literally is is we're, we're looking at how do we go and work with um, marketers at a domestic level and the platforms at a domestic level. Because what we, what, what sits heavily on me is that, you know, the, the conversations around brand safety and GARM, I liken them to sort of being engine room and boardroom. Engine room in the sense that they're very technical, boardroom in the sense that they're very technical. I mean, uh, strategic rather, uh, related to things like, you know, ESG and stuff like that. Um, but you know, at the same time, I recognize that I don't want brand safety to be sort of um, a luxury. It shouldn't be held up in big global brands and big brands and big agencies and big platforms. It needs to be democratized. So the idea of going to mar uh, you know, more markets um, at a local level, going to domestic advertisers, even looking at sort of like smaller agencies, smaller brands, like what can we do collectively um, that makes this um, sort of easier um, to do sort of default settings? How do we do the right thing in terms of the industry? That to me is sort of like where I'd love to see us go next in terms of current practice. Yeah. Future practice, look, we're leaning heavily into disinformation. We're hopeful that we'll be able to do something um, and provide an update around our one year anniversary of the brand safety floor as well as the suitability framework. Um, but the other thing that sort of weighs heavily on me is like, you know, vulnerable audiences, you know, younger users and stuff like that. The more of these um, technology is getting more um, sort of democratized and it's in the hands of younger users and younger users are, you know, their mental states and their sort of emotional beings are starting to be formed. And these, you know, technologies are becoming, for, you know, critical to that formation. Um, we need to make sure that, you know, harmful content for them is not easily accessible or as easily accessible. And if they are engaging in this, is that there is a means of reaching them and making sure that they are protected because, you know, the idea that, you know, irresponsible challenges get sent around in terms of viral messaging. And then you have, unfortunately, a 10 year old girl, you know, accidentally hanging herself in Italy. That's a family that's been shattered undoubtedly and you know and it sort of just it gives me goose pimples and i sort of like choke up thinking about it because i've got 
two young children and you'd never want to have them in a bad place in, you know, with technology that, you know, is obviously ad funded. Um, and, and this is the sort of thing that keeps me up at night and sort of makes me want to take the right step in the right direction tomorrow morning. Well, Rob, you know, I should say just thank you for, on behalf of everybody, really, that just says, you know, thank you for caring about this. Thank you for, you know, being the conscience uh, somewhat of the industry and making us kind of focus on the right things. Um, you know, wishing you all the best of luck with uh, the future of GOM. And, you know, we're fully supported. Many, many others are. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Tom, thank you for having me back. Um, thank you for, uh, for sort of helping to propel the journey. Um, the start of the journey and then keep us along the way and giving us this visibility. We really, really appreciate having ID comes in our corner. That's good. It's been a pleasure always. Thank you, Rob. Thanks. Who would you like to meet on future episodes? Please let us know in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel where you will also find previous guests, including leading media executives from companies like P&G, L'Oreal, Mars, Mastercard, and many more. Plus some of the industry's most provocative thought leaders such as Belinda Smith, Jerry Dakin, Professor Mark Ritson, Nadine Cart McHugh, and Gary Vaynerchuk. You can also subscribe to get new episodes each week. And if you like this episode and think someone else would, then please do share it. Thanks so much for watching.